Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and I have two cast iron frying pans that are connected together with a series of bolts. Now in between these cast iron frying pans are four Peltier or thermoelectric coolers. If you don't know what a Peltier cooler is, I suggest you look at this video right here. If you do know what they are, you know that one side exposed to heat and the other side exposed to a heat sink will produce a voltage. So what I've done is I've taken four of those coolers I've used some of this heat sink uh, compound, which truthfully is not the greatest stuff in the world. It's greasy. The uh, coolers slide around. I, I am looking into some adhesive tapes that are supposed to be thermoconductive, and also I'm looking at uh, some compounds that harden. Now with this particular setup, the bolts create pressure to hold it together, so this just gives them a better contact. Now there are four thermoelectric coolers in between here. Two of them are hooked in series on each side. This will raise the voltage, and then those two are then hooked in parallel, or actually two and two in series, those are hooked in parallel to come to here. Now, the sun is not out. I have this large Fresnel lens. I had planned with this video to heat this top pan up a lot with the Fresnel lens, create a nice big spot, and see how much voltage we can get with one of these, power some stuff. But unfortunately, there's a tropical depression, tropical storm that way. It's not headed our way, but we've had overcast for the past three days. So what I'm going to do, this is a millivolt meter, so when you see the voltage jump on this, don't get too excited about it because it just shows that the little bit of sun that we do have is doing something. And you can see that that meter jumps up a little bit. So what I'm going to be doing is taking this small motor and seeing if we can put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in this pan and see if we can get it to run. So we've got some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. I'm going to put a little bit there. You can see that that motor instantly took off on its own. So the heat from the rubbing alcohol on the one side of the uh, thermoelectric coolers is actually causing this little motor right here to run. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that motor is still running and it's been about five or six minutes. I get a lot of emails about people who go camping and they do stuff like spend weeks at a time out in the middle of nowhere. They've asked me for an alternative to hand crank generators. Now when they're out there, most people bring laptops, GPS, cell phones, that sort of thing, and they need to keep that stuff charged. Now a hand crank generator, there's some really great concepts out there. They actually work really well. but this setup right here would actually be a good alternative. This is kind of heavy. You could scale this down somewhat or get it just right. This is just a rough prototype. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can take this side, put it on a campfire, and then on the back side, this is an older pan that's we've used for different videos. These, I put washers with rubber gaskets and some silicone and sealed it. So hopefully this holds water. I'm not sure if it will or not. The idea is to set this on top of your campfire, put water on top of there, see how it works. You can see that we have a really, really small fire down there. It's basically, again, I don't want to burn up the wiring because it's not insulated. But this water up here is actually getting warm and we're at a solid two volts right now. This has been about two minutes maybe, maybe three minutes. You actually can't stop. It's really hard to stop. There's a lot of force right there. So that's being powered just strictly from the campfire. So we've drenched the fire and we've had it off for about five minutes and it's still producing three volts. I think I might have pushed my luck with a few of the coolers. If you get them too hot, there's little wires that, the positive negative wires that come out of them. If you get them too hot, they'll actually pull right out. So I wouldn't push this past three volts. So each one's producing two volts. There's four of them, but those again are, four total are, they're not all in series. They're two are in series, two aren't. So to get your voltage up, you probably need uh, two volts a piece. 
to charge something 12 volt, you would need probably seven or eight of them. We're gonna be doing future videos on this and seeing what we can get. My neighbor's about to start mowing her lawn, so uh, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.